Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In previous video, I have spoken to you about credit risk. What is credit risk? How we calculate it? And what are the basic component of credit risk? In today's video, my focus will be to tell you that what are the regulatory guidelines which are basically governed by the bank and what are the things which they keep in their mind when they are doing an assessment of credit risk. So without wasting your time, let me take you forward. So there are some models which are highly used like Basel and IFRS. Now what is Basel and IFRS? So these are two separate guidelines. Uh, Basel is followed in more Europe because this is created by a European standard and then IFRS none is also highly used in United States. So in USA and Europe, both these standards are used. Now, what is this? What is the meaning of these two standards? So both of them tells us about precautions, which we need to take to manage credit risk about precautions to manage credit risk. Now, when you say precautions, so what is precaution? Okay, there are some pillars which are given by, let's say, Basel. So Basel is more important in this whole series because Basel, Basel is highly used. Now, there are Basel 1, then Basel 2, then Basel 3. So three type of Basel are there. Now, if you go as per their terminology, so they have divided three pillars. To manage credit risk. Now, let me write that three pillar to manage credit risk. Now, pillar number one is minimum capital requirement. That how much the minimum capital a bank should always keep in their pocket so that if a loan default is happening or any type of default is happening, so there should be no lack of money in the pocket of the bank in terms of functioning it so that the functioning of the bank should not be stopped because of any particular loss. So that is known as minimum capital requirement. So that is a percentage which is divided by the governing a governing body of that particular country, let's say in India, it's Reserve Bank of India. So they basically finalize that how much minimum capital the bank has to keep in their pocket. So this is pillar number one. Now pillar number two is supplementary supervisor review that banks always have to maintain a supervisor review. So this is the second pillar and who that supervisor will be that is also part of the guideline. Then the third pillar is market discipline that the bank has to manage the market discipline what is set by the authoritative body of that particular country. Now, in this video, I want to precisely focus on the minimum capital requirement. The reason is because this is the main credit risk area, which is calculated by all of us in the company who are like working as a credit risk analyst or any part of analyst job role. If they are working on PD, LGD, EAD model. So this is the area where they would be actually working. So to handle this credit risk, uh, minimum capital requirement, there are two type of approaches. Number one is your standard approach, which we call S A. Now number two type of approach is internal rating based and we call it IRB. 
so standardized approach what is standardized approach so in standardized approach everything is mostly taken from the external vendor don't go into very much detail in this video i want to set the context first i will explain standard approach and irb approach very much in detail in upcoming video where i will give you a whole design diagram and the tables also associated with this so as of now just understand then in sa approach everything is mostly predefined by the regulatory body which is let's say rbi in india and osfi in canada similarly this irb approach is internal rating based which is more dependent on the bank itself now this irb is divided into two part like f irb so this will be f irb then a IRB. So these are the two types. Now, what is FIRB and AIRB also? So this is more useful. This is the approach which is used more in bank. That is advanced internal rating based approach. Okay. And FIRB stands for foundation internal rating based approach. And this one is more advanced. So that's why this is used more. Okay. Now one more thing which you should remember that the main, the main focus of all this setup, what we are checking here is to calculate the ECL or we call it EL and this is known as estimated loss. So loss is of two type. One is estimated loss, then UCL that is unexpected. So our focus is to target the expected loss so that the bank know well in advance that how much the loss will happen if a obligor or a borrower is not able to pay the money back. So the formula of ECL is in this course, we are going to cover this whole. So we would be covering ECL end to end. Now the formula of ECL stands is PD that is probability of default multiply by LGD, LGD stands for loss given by the default multiply by EAD that is exposure at default. Now just remember the terms lately in next video, you will understand all the full end to end with example. So ECL stands for expected credit loss probability of default. What is a probability that a borrower will default is known as PD. And what is the loss given by the default at a particular point of time is known as LGD then exposure at default. What is the total exposure which is there on the default verge? So that is known as EAD. On this note, I will conclude today's video. If you have any question or concern related to all this concept, so you can put that in the comment section. If you like this video, please hit the like button and share this video with your friends and please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are here for the very first time. Thank you.